Hello and welcome to 1.1 Lab 2. This is a continuation of Lab 1, so if you haven't already, go ahead and open your uh, ASP.NET 5 application we had started in Lab 1. Now, in the first lab, it, it was uh, fairly light because I just wanted to give you kind of a 30,000 foot flyby overview of some of the basics to just start off. So we went over things like app.use and, and app.run. And then we talked about using IIS Express as opposed to using ASP.NET, use file server so we can package it up and run it on any platform. And we also talked about running static files. And I talked about middleware uh, with dependencies. Now, what I want to do in, in this lab is I want to digress a little bit from ASP.NET, um, although talk about some things that are not ASP.NET but uh, related within ASP.NET. I know that sounds confusing. But uh, in the old days, if you were an ASP or an ASP.NET programmer, you were exclusively pretty much Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft liked to have control of everything. They wanted to package everything. Over the years, uh, with the help of the web development community, open source has obviously become huge. And web developers like open source. We like collaborating. We like working together and learning from each other. Well, uh, Microsoft over the past couple years has started to embrace that. Not 100%, but they're definitely way better than they used to be. And so I mentioned it briefly in the last file. I talked a little bit about Node. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how do we manage uh, some client-side dependencies for our application, but do them from the server side. So if we want to include uh, things into our applications like Bootstrap, uh, or jQuery or things like that. How can we do that when we're building an ASP.NET application? There are things, tools out there f that are come from the open source community. They don't come from Microsoft, but come from the open source community to help us do that. And actually, uh, a lot of them come from the uh, Node community. And so Node has become so popular, Microsoft has kind of included some of their tools and things in the ASP.NET 5 application. Um, they were there a little bit in the um, ASP.NET 4, like you could, once you created one, it included Bootstrap automatically and all that stuff, jQuery and all that stuff. But uh, what if you wanted an application that you didn't want those? Uh, now, what you have to do with ASP.NET 5 is you have to include those. It's not a big deal to include it, um, but uh, you can do it to include them, to have them run. Now, for those of you that may not be aware, I mentioned Bootstrap a couple times. Uh, Bootstrap is a uh, web, the world's most popular web framework. It was originally created by Twitter, and they open sourced it. So a lot of sites today are built on Bootstrap. It's just a collection of CSS files and JavaScript that's built on top of jQuery to automate and make things, uh, you know, responsive, mobile-first web design. Now, what I want to talk about first is I, um, this. what I'm going to cover is not so much ASP.NET 5 as it is the open source and using Visual Studio to integrate that into your ASP.NET 5 application. If you open your browser and go to bower.io, and feel free to uh, stop the recording any time and peruse this site, I would encourage you to do so. But Bower is a package manager, so if you want to include things like um, Bootstrap, you can use Bower to include that into your application, and you can even use Bower to update the version if there's a new version of Bootstrap that comes out, and you can do that. Now, could you do it without Bower? Yes, you could. You could go to getbootstrap.com, download the files, copy them over into your application, and it would still work. But why not let uh, it do it for us? So if we right-click on ASP, our package there, and we we'll go to Add, New Item, and we go to client side, <clears throat> what I can do is I can click Bower configuration file. And the name, I already have one here, so that's why I created one, is going to be bower.json. And I keep that as, as the name. That's important you keep that as name. When you add that, what it's going to do is over here, it's going to include bower.json over here on the right. Okay. It's also going to, uh, when, when you open that up. Notice it's a lot like our project.json. We have dependencies here and bower.json we have dependencies. Now when you first open this up you're going to want to rename the uh, name of the application. I usually tend to want it named the same as my project and the same you know all, all around so I know what it belongs to and your dependencies will be empty. If you start put in some quotes and start typing what will happen is the intelligence will drop down and what um, 
Visual Studio is going to do is it's going to go out to the Bower repository and see what all the dependencies that Bower supports out there and it'll load them for you so you can pick the one you want. So if you start typing boot, you'll see bootstrap. You hit enter, it's going to pop you over to the right hand side to the value and then it'll it'll pull again from that Bower repository and show you what are the current release versions that you can use. So the current release is 3.3.6. So uh, I'm going to put that in, and when you save it, what it's going to do is in your dependencies, it's going to create this Bower folder, and underneath there is going to create Bootstrap, and it's intelligent enough to know that Bootstrap is dependent upon jQuery, so it'll install jQuery for you. It'll also install this lib folder. It didn't do that in the old days, but now it does because in the old days we had to copy it over because we need, we still need those Bootstrap you know the bootstrap files and the jQuery files underneath our WW root because that's what we're serving up to our client so it installs that all for you and then if you notice this little light bulb here you can actually uh, when it updates you know there's a carrot when it updates you can actually update to the next version and things to keep things as current as possible so it helps you manage some of your packages. There's other things in the Bower, and feel free to look through Bower and uh, install what you want, but it, uh, Bootstrap and jQuery are pretty much the most common ones. But it allows you to manage what are the client-side dependencies of my application. Okay. Now, in addition to that, uh, um, there are some things from the open source world that uh, web developers like to do to help make things as simple as possible. For example, on nearly every web application, we do a lot of the same things when we do web development. Uh, for example, we uh, maybe clean up and delete some uh, test files and things like that, or maybe move some folders around. We maybe do some minification. Uh, I do that on there every application. And for those of you, just let me digress for a second on what minification is. Um, if you have a file, let's say an HTML file or CSS or JavaScript for that matter, I mean that's your basic web app is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You have uh, when you develop those, you are taught to you know use indentation and spacing, so it, and comments and things like that. So it's easier to develop, and when you're working on a team, your team members, it's easier for them to follow along and things like that. Well. The problem, that's great, but the problem is when you serve that up in production, especially in today's world where mobile is so important, you want your web application to be as fast as possible. And in most applications, are not simply three files, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You may have an HTML file, but you may have like, you know, three to five CSS files that each have maybe 3,000 lines. You may have uh, a jQuery file and three or four other JavaScript files, maybe some plugins and all this stuff. So what happens is you want to reduce the traffic as much as possible, both across the network and the amount of traffic that happens to make it as fast as possible. So one of the ways we do that is minification. So minification will take a file and it will take it through an algorithm where it will reduce the white space in it so it can take an HTML file and reduce it to one line because HTML doesn't respect white spaces it'll reduce it to one line and get rid of the comments now so what usually end up, ends up happening is you have a development set of code and then you have a production set of code that you deploy additionally we can do things like take uh, let's say you have three CSS files when that app loads, if you have three CSS files, the client has to go across the internet network to the web server three times with three HTTP network requests, hit the web server, and pull back three times those CSS files. Well, it'd make it a little faster if we not only minified those, but if we lumped them into one so that it only has to make one request across the network to get that CSS and pull it back. Well, these tools, these steps you have to jump through are, are, it's not that they're hard, it's just that we want to make things as fast as possible and automate as much as possible because we just want to build some cool stuff. We don't want to have to do all the stuff that we know is necessary but uh, is kind of a pain, a necessary evil, so to speak. Uh, I mean, wouldn't it be great if everyone had the highest speed possible and we wouldn't have to worry about it, but that's not the case. So, in order to do this, what we can do is we can use tools from the open source world to make this possible that web developers came up with. So if you go to uh, npmjs.com forward slash package forward slash gulp, you're going to get this site here. Now, first, I want this is actually two things here I want to talk about. One is npm, what that is, and the other is gulp. 
NPM stands for Node Package Manager. Now, when we get into the section on Node, you're going to see this a ton, but you're going to see it also uh, a little bit in ASP.NET 5 because ASP.NET 5, Microsoft has embraced some of these open source things, and Node is a big player in the open source market. So NPM, Node Package Manager, it's similar to Bower in that it manages add-ons and middleware for your site and packages to help automate things and, and add things to your site. Now Gulp is an automated uh, package builder for automating things like minification and combining files and things like that. So there's a since these are two different things, there's kind of a two-step two process we got to go through. We first have to add NPM to our site, and then we have to add Gulp. So to add NPM, again, you would right-click, add file, add new item, and then you would go to NPM configuration file and keep the name, I already have one, so keep the name as package.json and then you click add and it's going to add NPM underneath here, uh, underneath your dependencies and it's going to add package.json and when it comes in, it, this is actually going to be empty. It's going to say dev dependencies and it's going to be blank. Now I want to talk about that for a second because you have power.json with dependencies, you have project.json with dependencies, and we've messed with both of these. So you've done, already you've added dependencies and middleware into your application, like serving up static files, or uh, adding bootstrap and jQuery. But notice package.json calls it dev dependencies. So whereas Bootstrap and the Microsoft ASP.NET static files, those are a part of your application that's going to be deployed, what this dev dependencies is, is what are we going to use as a part of our development process, in this case Gulp, but it's not going to be necessarily deployed with our application. We're not going to deploy Gulp. Gulp is just going to be used to help with things like minification or combining files, things like that. But we're going to use it as part of our development process. We do not want to send it with our application. So again, just like we added Bootstrap, you're going to just put in some quotes, start typing Gulp, and the IntelliSense will pop down. You can pop over and add in the latest version. And it's going to then add uh, Gulp to your uh, NPM, if we go over here on the right dependencies, here's Gulp 3.9.0. So I added that in for us. Now, it added Gulp as a dependency under our node package manager, but it didn't actually add Gulp because Gulp's underneath NPM. It didn't actually add Gulp to our application. What we have to do is you have to right click, you have to go add new item, and then Gulp configuration file. And again, you're going to want to leave the name is gulpfile.js, that's pretty important. And then you just click add and it's going to add this gulp file here. Now all it is is a JavaScript file. That's all it is. <clears throat> and there's a bunch of, uh, if you go, and I would encourage you to at some point come here and look through the sample file, read through some of the documentation and things of what you can do with gulp. But I'm going to show you an example here in just a moment. But uh, just to show you kind of how it breaks down, this should look very familiar uh, for you. A lot of you guys have had uh, JavaScript uh, in the past. So you're going to see this word require, that, that method, a lot when you get in the open source community in the Node world because Node uses it to say, okay, what am I going to have as a part of my application? It basically has this gulp class basically. And so I have a gulp that's requiring my gulp class file, or prototype file, which allows me to access all the gulp methods. So here I can access gulp.task. So I'm creating a task called default. And inside here is where I put my code that I want it to run. Now let me show you a little tidbit that if you're not used to the open source community, if you're used to only being in Microsoft, then this may be a little odd to you at first. But uh, I cut my teeth in Java and the open source community using Eclipse. So um, this was, um, I was used to doing this, but I know that C Sharp developers may not. If you go up to View, Other Windows, this one's kind of hidden. There's a Task Runner Explorer right here. Or if you go to Click Launch, you can start typing Task Runner and it'll come up here as well. And it opens up this window. What this Task Runner Explorer is, is basically what tasks are we going to have run for our application, and we can run them right from here. And you can have things run before it builds, after it builds, you can clean up files, all sorts of things. Now, ours says fail to load because we don't have any code in there yet uh, in our gulp.task. That's going to change as we add code. But this, we can actually run code right from here, run our tasks right from here to do stuff for us. 
So what I want to do is I want to show you an example of how we can utilize this tool to make things easier on us. So imagine that we have our jQuery JS file and we also have our bootstrap um, JS files here that we want to uh, combine. Let's say we want to combine these JS files. Well, uh, Gulp allows us to do that, but in order to do that we have to add another package. Now, I know you may be thinking, well, why are we having to add all these packages? That's web development. That's the open source world. It's allowing you to take modularization of little pieces that do things and put them all together. So in order to do this, what we have to do is we have to add gulp hyphen concat. So what we have to do is we have to go back to our package.json and we're going to put in here gulp hyphen gulp hyphen concat. And so then we're going to load the latest one there and I'm going to save that. And we now have the ability to do golf hyphen concat. It's installed. It says it's not installed. It's going out and getting it and installing it for me. So now what we have to do is in our gulp configuration file, uh, while that's being downloaded over my slow internet connection here, uh, what we have to do is we have to require it to use the gulp concat file. So what we're going to do is just put a comma there, go down here, and we'll call it concat equals and then we're going to use that require that require method and we are going to simply require gulp hyphen concat there oops I misspelled gulp gulp hyphen concat <clears throat> Now what we can do is we can have multiple task calls in here with Gulp. So for example, if we want to combine CSS files and JavaScript files, we're not going to combine those together. That won't work. So what we can do is we can actually, let me just change this from default to make it a little more user friendly when we read it so we know what it does. So our copy JavaScript function. And then if I just take this and I'm just going to copy it down okay so now that uh, gulp concat is installing here uh, what we can do is we can then go to our gulp file.js and notice I changed my default I just copied co and made it copy.javascript and I copy, copied another task called copy and let me change it to copy CSS because let's say we want to combine CSS and JavaScript files together. We don't want to copy both of them in the same file. We want to copy all our CSS files together and all our JavaScript uh, files together. Then what we can do is inside of here, let me show you the code that we're going to need to run. So let me highlight this here. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell it gulp.source. And then inside this gulp.source, it's going to want to, uh, it's going to need an array of objects that we're going to use. So let me, so in here, we're going to tell it, um, take our, if we come over here to our Bower components um, under Bootstrap and jQuery, if we were to look in those files, we can copy them over and if we were looking those files in our uh, Windows Explorer it would be under we would see it here under wwroot lib uh, bootstrap dist and here's uh, bootstrap.js um, and then if we come down here oops wrong one we have under jQuery dist, we have jQuery.js. Okay. Neither one of these are the minified versions. Um, we're just going to combine them for right now. So what we can do is we can say, okay, uh, we want it to be um, wwroot, 
and then underneath ww root we got lib and then boot strap dist js and then boot strap dot js and then our second file close the bootstrap one is going to be w root lib jquery dist jquery dot js okay so those are the two files we're working with then what we got a uh, basically string a method to here and the method we're going to use is called pipe that's a, a gulp method where we're going to say okay uh, we're going to combine these and where are we going to pipe it to where are we going to send it so what we're going to do is we're going to say okay take it and send it the gulp to the destination of and we'll do ww root lib okay send it to the general lib file uh, folder and then we can do something similar here with the CSS so let me just take this and I'm gonna copy it down here oops I accidentally cut it let me copy it I cut it okay and in this case we're only gonna do one file just to show you how this works except I'm going to do close jQuery uh, the bootstrap and it's gonna be dist CSS bootstrap dot CSS and I will send it to the same location just so you can see how this works So now what we can do is right before we tell it to send to our lib, we can put another pipe command in there. Let's get that back. And what this is going to do is we're going to tell it, okay, uh, we want to call our concat method. That's the method provided by gulp hyphen concat. So we're going to use that method to concat and we can tell it we want it to concatenate into let's do third hyphen party dot js. So it's going to take bootstrap dot js, jquery dot js and combine it into one third party dot js. Okay so here we have uh, our source files for bootstrap, our source files for jquery. We're going to combine those concatenate them into third-party JS and the destination is going to be the www root uh, lib file. <clears throat> okay, so here we have our bootstrap.js file, jQuery.js file. Those will both be concatenated into third-party.js file and will be under ww root uh, lib. So they'll be in this directory right here. Now our CSS, we have our uh, bootstrap.css, and we also have our blog.css file. So let's combine those two together, and so we'll, that's under www.root slash blog.css. <coughs> so we'll combine those two con together, and again, just for the sake of time, let me just we're going to concatenate those into, let's call it site.css. And again, those will be in the root uh, slash lib file. Okay, so now I can go down to my task runner explorer and I can right click on any one of these and run it, or I can uh, run the whole thing. I'm going to right click on the JavaScript one and have that run and I see in the output file it is running and if you look over on the right hand side in my solution explorer 
you'll see that I have a third-party JS file where it has combined my bootstrap and it's going to be a pretty big file and it's combined jQuery into one file. Now I can do the same thing with uh, my CSS file as well. Now before I do the CSS one, uh, what I want to do is I want to come over here to package.json and I'm going to add another reference to a gulp file. So let's start this over again. Okay, gulp hyphen uglify CSS. And then I'll do the latest one. Okay, uh, what uglify CSS is going to do is um, that's going to be the um, processing uh, pipeline. Uh, so we're going to uglify it and, and then combine it so we can uh, call that uglify CSS in our CSS processing pipeline from Gulp. And then uh, after it's done, we can see that it's it will create site.css in our lib folder. And then we can define a clean test to delete all those files. Okay, so then what I have to do is I have to go back to my Gulp file and I have to create a reference for it. So we'll call it uglify CSS. It's going to be equal to require oops, gulp uglify CSS. Then down here in our CSS pipe what I can do is actually call that right before here. So pipe, and I'm going to call uglify CSS method. Now let me go ahead and let's run this one. So I'm going to right click in Task Runner Explorer, and I'm going to run it. And I can see that it ran in my window here on the right, but I also see I have a site CSS folder here, and it combined it, but it also minified it. That's what the uglify does. See, it's all in one line, so it's only six lines. It got rid of a bunch of, uh, here in the blog CSS, see, it got rid of all the spacing and things like that. So, now that that's done, and I see that it works, I can define a clean test that will delete all those output files in between builds. So as we update, it's going to clean things up. So we got to add another NPM package, and then we're going to create a task that deletes that uh, uh, lib folder that I'm, uh, those files in the lib folder that I'm dropping all my outputs in. So I'm going to go back to my NPM, and I'm going to add another package. called delete and we want the latest 2.2 save that have it added and installed I then have to create a reference to it over my gulp so it's gonna be del equal to require del so now what I can do is I can add another simple task. I'm just going to copy this one. I'm going to call it clean. And I'm going to get rid of <clears throat> all of that. So I'm starting from scratch. Now, um, probably if I was thinking ahead, I probably should maybe have them in their own folder. So I could have done something like this. Uh, return uh, del... www root see if I did this I would re delete that entire lib folder and I don't necessarily want to delete that entire lib folder um, maybe I want to do um, let me do CSS so let's say I copy this over um, these two and I'm going to copy them over into www root CSS oh, actually wrong 
I want that right here. So now when I run copy CSS, it creates a CSS folder for me in a site.css. So now I've got this clean that I can get rid of it to start over. So when I right click and do run for clean, notice it got rid of my wwroot CSS. So um, let's say, let me do something similar up here so it makes more sense uh, for my JS. I'm going to call it JS file. And then I'm going to get rid of these two older references. I'll do that one manually here. OK, so here I have, I'm taking these two files, JavaScript combining it in a third party, and going to put it in a JS folder. So if I right click and run, I now have a JS folder with thirdparty.js. If I do the same thing with CSS, I do run, I now have a CSS with site CSS in it, and it did all the necessary concatenation, uglification, and, and everything. And then I've got this uh, clean here, and I can do, um, in this case, let me do this again. Let me say re uh, clean. CSS and just to separate them here, let me do another one. And we'll call this clean JS. So now, if I run clean CSS, it got rid of my CSS folder. And if I run clean JS, it got rid of my JS folder. So now, here's where this you may think, well, why in the world are you doing all that? Here's where it becomes important. If I create a re-add in, if I, when I started this, I had a default task. So I'm going to re-add in that default task. But instead of having this function right here call, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass a reference in to all the others. So I'm going to run clean CSS. And then clean, oops, I need my quotes, clean JS. And then I'll run copy JavaScript. And then copy CSS. So now I've got. Uh, down here I've got this default and if I were to run that it's gonna clean it and then create and run all four of those all at once so if I run it again and it happens so fast it's hard to see it on the right hand side but what what that enables you to do is let's say you updated some of your JavaScript or CSS instead of going through all that manual process of copying over minification we just created in just you know 38 lines of code here uh, a default that groups all of them together and does them all in process. And remember I mentioned in a previous video uh, with middleware, it depends on the top down how things run. So now in addition to this, uh, Visual Studio has a way that we can tie this in even tighter to our development process. The task runner inside Visual Studio has a bindings feature. So let's say, for example, um, I'm sure you guys have done this with C-sharp stuff and things, and you run this clean process to, well, clean your project. Well, what if when you do that, you want to run it, have it run clean CSS? What you can do is you can right click and you can do bindings and you can say, when I clean. Okay, so back here we had these bindings. So now when my clean runs, it's going to run clean CSS. So if I do a clean, there my CSS is gone. So I can tie bindings. So there I just tied my JS one to it. So let me run clean. And my JS is gone. Now, let's say you want to do this default every time you either build your project or open your project or what have you. You can do the same thing with that. So let you can set it up. So every time you open this project or build it, you know that you're working with the latest greatest stuff you know if you forget to run something or or when you update a file I can do a binding 
and I can say, okay, every time my project opens, it's going to do this default. Or I can bind it and say, every time before I build, it's going to run that. So now when I do a build, there I have a CSS and JavaScript folder right there. Now, we've gone through several things about how we can use Gulp in our projects. We've barely scratched the surface, to be honest with you. Um, I would highly recommend that you come through here and you look at some of these things on what you can do with Gulp to speed up your development and have it do a lot of the processing and a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So you don't have to mess with all this stuff. So you can automate a whole bunch of stuff. Um, in the open source web development world, this stuff's been around for a little while. But what's cool is to see Microsoft start to embrace this so that we can, uh, you guys can do some things in the Microsoft ASP.NET 5 world that previously you had to do open source projects to do with. So um, I hope that's uh, beneficial for you. If you have any questions, let me know. And happy coding.